Welcome back. This is your host, Christy Slaughter, on Super Talk Saturday Mornings, WFHG. We've got our next special guest in the studio. His name is Rick Dollar. He probably doesn't need much introduction to a lot of people. You are no, <laughs> no stranger here to Bristol Broadcasting either. No, actually uh, worked here in my younger days and um, learned a lot from uh, Mr. Uh, Blake Frazier and Tragler and a bunch of those guys kind of took me under their wing and and uh, taught me the ropes, so to speak. So, uh, good place to be. Loved it here. Bill Hagee's still here, I see, which is awesome. Bill's Bill's probably like the wall part of the wallpaper. I think. Love him to death. Oh yeah, he's still here. <laughs> great guy. Great guy. People love it. You just want to be here you're part of the family oh absolutely i couldn't think of a better place to work it's a conglomerate now man you guys are grabbing all the ratings books which is i guess a good a good thing also it's kind of what we do yeah (laughs) job security (laughs) rick you're the executive director at the appalachian cultural music association mountain music museum isn't that crazy that's how do you say all that like that that's you gotta have like eight cups of coffee to do that and you're also the producer at the Picking Porch. Yeah, the Picking Porch show is uh, and the the museum have been around 20 years. Um, of course, 19 of those years was in in Bristol on State Street, and actually started in the Bristol Mall. And uh, you can imagine you had like a, uh, a a kind of a captive audience there. You know, if husbands were walking around with their wives, and they wanted to go to say. Um, you know, one of those smelly good stores. I can't really say the name on the radio, but you know that's uh, and you want to go down to the food court and grab a bite, and all of a sudden you hear some banjo going on. You're there, you know. So drawing them in that exactly. tells you how old I am. I remember when it was in the Bristol Mall. <laughs> I hey, we're all have, getting there. So shouldn't probably admit. That. Of course, the alternative. I don't really like the alternative. So hey, just put on the ears. <laughs> Rick asked me. I had a birthday on Monday, and he asked me last week, and he said, "How are you going to be?" And I said, "I really don't know. I think you just lose track." So you got a producer named Rick too. I was wondering about that. I was like, I don't remember asking you about your birthday. That's, that's Rick and Rick. Good. I'll just throw it out. Hey, Rick, and then the first one to the mic. What's happening? That's, there you go. What are what are some of the new things that you're doing at the museum? Some of the exhibits if people haven't been down to the Kingsport location. Well, we uh, moved to the Kingsport location in December. Uh, had a grand opening in January. Had Ralph Stanley the second and the Clinch Mountain Boys. We were. Uh, they're good friends of, of what we do, and uh, we all help each other in this industry. And um, it's just gone crazy, I mean, to be honest with you. We have a 130-seat music venue in there. As soon as you come in the door, that's the first thing you see. And we did church views instead of uh, folding chairs, which is kind of a sacrifice on uh, a number of rear ends in the seats. But... It's kind of a cool place to come see a show. So I think that was the whole key to it. So, How, how did you get involved in Bluegrass? Wow. A uh, friend of mine had a little um, little medical issue back in 2002, which I'm not going to go into right now. But Well, that's another show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that's ours. <laughs> we could talk about that. But a um, buddy of mine, Tony Dean, called me up, and he said, um, you know, while you're recovering um, – why don't we do some interviews? You used to love to interview people, and I did. You know, I mean, rock stars, wrestlers, you name it, celebrities. was not a problem to sit down with these guys because they're just people like me and like you. So uh, long story short, uh, we went out and interviewed some some, uh, bluegrass uh, uh, superstars, I guess you'd say, like Doyle Lawson, uh, Bobby Osborne, anybody that you could think of at the time, Ricky Skaggs. And um, along the way, we just built relationships with these people um, because we wanted to show that the good side of what bluegrass is all about. And growing up, you know, my grandfather introduced me to bluegrass, and I thought it was the coolest thing. So I did kind of did the same thing for my grandson, uh, Logan, if he's listening out there. Um, but it, it's it's uh, a you know, it's a good thing. It's a good wholesome thing to do, a family type thing to do. If you if you slide into a bluegrass festival, normally you can, you know, it's really um, G rated. I mean, you go get some good food, sit down, listen to some good music, and you can go home, and you don't have to worry about covering the kids' ears. So, 
that's one of the unique things that I've noticed going to different bluegrass shows or mm-hmm. country music or folk shows, things like that. Yeah. And when you look across the audience, because I'm always looking, sure. you know, checking things out, kind of getting a feel for it, looking for people to interview. Right. It's really multi-generational, which it I think is. is very unique. And that's been the big thing about it. Um, Kingsport was uh, looking for something like the Mountain Music Museum to come into town. They didn't seek us out. We uh, were looking for more uh, support financially. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. So anybody out there that knows anything about a nonprofit knows that you got to go get that money to keep the lights on. And it's very, very hard to do that sometimes. So... We went out, uh, we, were, we were seeking out a couple of businesses, and come to find out they were uh, already fans of us in Bristol and uh, had actually showed up at the shows, but we didn't know who they were at the time. So it was, it was a kind of a good surprise. But um, Kingsport put their arms around us, visit Kingsport, uh, the Kingsport Chamber. Um, a lot of those guys just jumped right in there with us. Uh, we got some great supporters now with Eastman Credit Union, Horizon Credit Union, um, man, you name it, uh, Domtar Paper, Appalachian Federal Credit Union. I mean, uh, if, if I could name them all, just go to the fa- the uh, Facebook page, or better better yet, go to the uh, mountainmusicmuseum.org, the website, and you'll see a whole banner in there of all of our sponsors. So, What are some of the coolest things that you currently have in the museum right now? Oh, Wow. Well, about six months ago, we heard about the Roy Acuff fiddle that was on Goodwill's website for auction. And I thought, that is just nuts, man. I mean, that fiddle's got to be worth thousands of dollars. So it kind of just bounced off of me. And um, But our, our PR guy, uh, Fred Anderson, uh, happened to know the gentleman that ran the, good, the whole entire goodwill organization he was a ceo so after the whole story got fixed and it got back to the original owner we um we gave him a call and um he returned the call and uh gave me about five minutes on the phone to sell him the museum (laughs) which was quite a feat you know um at that point um you know he said we have a gentleman's agreement and i was shocked i said great We'll have the fiddle for a year. It's it's at the museum. Uh, I think May May twenty fifth. I think is when we sign the paperwork with them. But we also put the fiddle uh, and Mr. Peak, Mr. Lamar Peak, is the gentleman that owns it. We we brought him to the Huckabee show. So Governor Huckabee wanted to he wanted to interview this guy. He wanted to tell the story, and he wanted somebody to to play the fiddle. So we had a friend of ours, Jim Van Cleve. Uh, from a group called Mountain Heart from years ago. Uh, Jim's doing his own thing now. He was with Josh Turner for a while. Um, Great fiddle player, uh, Grammy Award winner. And uh, we put him out there, man, and Jim just tore it up. And uh, just the sound filled this entire studio where they were filming the show. And it was just an incredible thing. But we took possession of the fiddle, and it's there if you'd like to come see it. It's in it's uh, in an exhibit with all the rest of the Roy Acuff memorabilia we have. So, so are you always looking for new things to exhibit at the museum, or well, how sure. does that work? Well, I have this belief that a museum, it, it has to be a living, breathing thing. First of all, that's why we put the music venue in there. Second of all, if you don't change things around, people are going to say, man, I've already been there, I saw this, I saw that. Uh, and, and it's, uh, I guess, a belief of mine, too, that you have to pay homage to these guys, man, like Roy Acuff, uh, Dr. Ralph, um, Bill Monroe. I mean, all these guys have their own museum. But, uh, you know, 20 years ago, Tim White and the rest of the guys at the ACMA had an idea, and it worked. So uh, we're still there. <laughs> That's all I can say. Where are you located? 316 Broad Street, uh, right next to Hook and Ladder Moonshine Distillery, which I did not plan it that way, but I'm sure... If it works, it works. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever works. It's a marketing ploy that kind of happened. But uh, we're right in, so um, 
Thursday nights are our big nights. We do shows. We have uh, shows booked all the way through um, October now. So, if, like, if you want to know exactly who's playing and when they're playing, uh, go to thepickandporch.org, and you can see the schedule there and all the events will come. So uh, you also have an opportunity to buy tickets, reserve seats, whatever you need to do. How much is admission to the museum for the events, or does that vary? Um, well, the museum itself, if you're coming in, um, you just want to see the museum on a day where we don't have music. So you're, you're looking at five bucks to come in, go, uh, you know, a good 30, 45 minutes and walk around, and or, or however long you want to be there. Um, the, uh, the whole thing about museums they've kind of gotten out of hand i think you know when you have to pay like 40 bucks to come into a museum then you got an issue because not everybody can do that but we wanted to make this so that you could pay to come into the museum you could see a good show i mean a normal show on a thursday night is eight dollars that gives you the opportunity to come in see the museum plus sit down and watch a two-hour show and, and bring see, your family. And see the ACUF fiddle. And see the ACUF fiddle. We need to take a quick commercial break. Can you stay with us, Rick? No problem. Can you stay with us, Rick? You've got the commercial, Rick? Uh -huh. Well, yeah, I, I can know, stay with you. Into I'm, humor. I'm not I'm, going anywhere. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We'll be back here in just a few minutes. This is your host, Christy Slaughter, on Super Talk Saturday mornings, WFHG 92.9. Welcome back. This is your host, Christy Slaughter, on Super Talk Saturday mornings. I'm joined back with my special guest, Rick Dollar. He has been in the industry for several years. The industry. What are we talking about? All of it. Oh, bluegrass? Yeah, bluegrass, communications, radio, yeah, meeting and greeting it. people. Wow. Just all of it. I've even done his job, too. Have you really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really enjoy it, but you know. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> Production work is tough, though. I mean, let me tell you. I love getting in here and doing this every day. Only cool thing about it is you can manipulate everything. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, in including the host. I I run things around here. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> right, man. I've been there. I know. I know no, I mean. don't. I don't run anything. Don't let me lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> He he does do a pretty good job handling the mics. Yeah, he does most do of the it. time. <laughs> most of the time most keeps me time. from yelling in the mic. Okay, let's talk about mics. You've got to interview some incredible people. I looked on your Facebook page. You've got pictures with some amazing stars. I'm just wondering what were some of the most interesting people that you got to meet or interviews. Do you have some stories for us that you could share? Yeah, Ricky Skaggs probably was one of the better ones. Uh, we um. We happened to get in early at the Barter Theater a couple of years ago when uh, when Trey and Trey Hensley and Rob Ikes opened up for uh, Ricky, and you know what a day that was! Two great musicians uh, opening up for another great musician, and it was just a a good day. Uh, but the cool thing was we were sitting there at sound check by ourselves. You know, there's Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder out there just wearing it out. And um, nobody else was in there. So we just thought that was an awesome thing. But Ricky uh, got finished. Well, it was very gracious. Kept his mandolin strapped to his shoulder, though. By the way, I'll tell you that right now. So we go up in the uh, in the balcony, and he starts telling me about his life growing up. And, uh, you know, it's a, an incredible story. He came from a family in Kentucky that wasn't, uh, you know, they weren't swimming in money. But man, music brought them the joy that they were looking for. So it's it's a lot of the musicians that I've interviewed, uh, Vince Gill, same way. Um, a lot of these guys, that's what they were looking for in their life that brought them the joy that they needed. And uh, you know, I have to say, music's brought me through a lot of things too. So it's uh, doesn't have anything to do with being a musician. I guess it's just a, being a music lover more than anything. What did you do before you got into this position that you're at now with the Mountain Music Museum? Did you ever wow. imagine that you would be doing what you're doing today? Well, not really, but I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I started doing some uh, publicity for Tim White and the guys at Song of the Mountains, which are actually taping a show today, by the way. We'll give them a little shout out in Marion, Virginia. But uh, uh, started out uh, doing that. Uh, going up and interviewing Tim's guests and, and, and putting everything on their social media for them. So they would have regular interviews that they would do 
for the show taping, which is actually 140 million potential viewers is what they have every show. It's just ridiculous how popular the show is. But uh, it was a good way for me to kind of, uh, you know, sharpen my teeth a little bit about on what I was, what I was really going to do in the future. Uh, learned a lot about the industry and the business end of what this is, and it is a business. Some people, they, they tend to forget that, uh, even if it's country music, rock, it doesn't matter. It's all a business, and you're there to promote that artist. So uh, did that, and uh, Tim said, um, hey, I got this little show in Bristol. Would you like to come down and guest host sometime? So I did, and uh, lo and behold, I mean, he's the executive producer, but I produce the show now, and um, we brought it to Kingsport, and um, we're currently... Um, I guess I can. I guess I can say this. We're currently seeking out radio stations for um, syndication. Uh, like to do maybe a TV show. So we're looking bigger and better and longer and farther than than the show was ever really thought to go. But uh, it's uh, it's been a been a great ride and things are still going well. I mean, when you come in <laughs> as a volunteer. And then you go to the board of directors and you start moving up the ladder a little bit and you start loving the volunteers and loving the whole thing about it. Uh, it's kind of hard to walk away. I mean, it's very hard to walk away because I've got some great friends there and people that I'm going to know for the rest of my life. So I don't know how old you are. I'm not going to ask that, but you've definitely <laughs> been doing this longer than I've been doing it. So let's say you're a mentor for a lot of people who are just starting in the industry, or maybe we have young people, listeners, right. or somebody who said, you know, that's really what I've always wanted to do. What advice would you give us, those people who are saying, you know, I really, this is something that I think I would love to do. I have a passion for this. Well, I think that if, if, you, if it's anything that you want to do, uh, no matter what it is, interviewing people, uh, getting to know these people, and, and you know, I mean, <laughs> you want to write a book or whatever, the thing about it is, uh, love it as much as you possibly can, and don't let anything or any person sway you from going in the direction that you need to go in, because when you know in your heart and your mind and your soul that this is where you need to be, that it can bring you a decent living, um, you know, you need to go there, no matter what. So it's, uh, it can be, a it can be a rough road sometimes. I've had, I've had people that were very close to me try to push me away and do other things. And that's just not what I'm doing. It's in your blood. It's there. I mean, it's not something that you can stop. So you got to do what you got to do. Okay. I want to ask you what you see the future of the museum being like, but before we get to that, let's mm -hmm. go back to Rick Dollar. Okay. And what do you desire to do? Like, what's the next phase for you as an individual? Who would you like to interview? What kinds of things would you like to do to branch out? Well, I think it's really good to uh, stay in the industry and, and help younger bands coming up, I think, is a big thing. Uh, I did a short stint with a record label, and um, I, I brought on four or five really good acts, and I saw some people's eyes light up when they were signing those deals because their dream was coming true. And I had to think, I remember that, that feeling of being able to sit down in front of, you know, Ricky Skaggs and, you know, I was freaking out on the inside, but I had to stay professional and do what I was supposed to do. And, um, I think the business end of this and being able to preserve the music in the tri cities area, we want to, we want to branch that out into a regional thing uh, I think the museum is going to grow um, by leaps and bounds. My plan is every 90 days we're going to come up with a new exhibit, something really cool for people to come in and see, something you've never seen before. And uh, that's, the, that's the big thing with us as far as me professionally as we go. Uh, we are starting a new uh, YouTube show called The Backroom Sessions. So uh, we're bringing in some pretty big acts to Kingsport. Uh, Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers are coming in on the 27th, and we're going to do uh, some live taping while they're there. We're going to do some podcast stuff. 
um, we're going to give anybody that supports the Mountain Music Museum, we're going to give them an option not to just come in and, and drop a bunch of money on us to keep us operating, but you're going to get something for that money. Um, just signed a, a pretty big uh, local business we haven't announced yet, but they want to come in. Our live stream on Facebook gets three to 7,000 views a week, and it just it happens. We've always done it. So those are numbers that you can print off and show somebody and say, hey, man, here's the proof. It's kind of like radio ratings books. Uh, means a lot to uh, to these people, and um, so it's that's just one of the many things that we've got going. Um, you know, if you ever want, if you want to know about it, uh, you know, uh, give us a call at the museum seven six five two five five two, and we'll be happy to sit down and talk about what your options are and what our options are and what we can do for your business. You mentioned during the commercial break that you were getting different bands and things in. How does the process work for selecting a band to come in? Does that go in front of the board as executive director? Do you decide that? Um, I think what we end up doing is just putting these groups on, seeing, seeing if the talent's there. You know, we have to, if you're going to charge somebody to come in the door, then you have to have a pretty talented bunch of people. Some somebody that people are going to come in the door and say, "Oh, great, they're coming!" You know, they're they're here finally. Um, so it's uh, that's that's not a board decision. I don't think uh, more than it's a uh, a decision of you know mine and Tim's more than anybody. I was uh, thinking if you if we have listeners that are in bands, we do sure. have some bands and things on. Could they contact you folks if they're they can, interested in maybe playing a show or something? Yeah, they can they can hit me up on any of my social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anything, and uh, just let me know you're interested. We'll uh, we'll definitely talk to you and see what you got. On your Facebook page, several of the artists that we were talking about today, mm-hmm. you have pictures with, so people can go and they can look at those as well. Yeah, sure. Dole Lawson's my buddy. Um, I love Dole, and uh, it's kind of a, a, a thing with he and I, we always take a selfie when we get together. So <laughs> we're going to do that during the news break. Thank okay. you. So, thank you so much for being here with us today, right. Rick. You're very welcome. We're going to put all the links up so people can get that on our Facebook Great. pages as well. Good thank deal. you. Can't wait to come down and check you out. Thanks. You. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back here in just a few minutes. This is your host, Christy Slaughter on Super Talk Saturday mornings, WFHG.